Good evening and welcome. I'm Sheila Balgobin, principal of Simply Improve Health, and I help people to train better and longer, have better sleep, and enjoy a better quality of life and health using simple plant-based products and simple techniques. This evening, I wanted to uh, talk to you about the nature of reality and what it really is. Um, and what prompted this particular live was watching Star Trek. Yes, I enjoy watching Star Trek. Um, TNJ happens to be one of my favorite shows. And the reason why is that I'd like to think that by the 24th century, we will have worked out some of the silly things that um, blight life on planet Earth um, and will have learned how to act and treat other people different from us nicely. Anyway, um, what's prompted it, the idea behind this was this particular episode where one of the characters um, was trapped um, in a, a sh literally shrinking universe until she realized that it was her thoughts that had created the nature of the re her reality in the first place. Um, now, you don't have to go wait to watch Star Trek or go or wait for the 24th century to find out that thoughts really do determine how we see ourselves as well as how we see the world. Think about it. Um, I'll give you practical examples. For example, did you know that um, actors who play tragic roles like Macbeth or, or some other tragic um, role develop depression after a while? quite often. Um, and the reason why is because they get into the role so deeply that they start to take on that role. They start to become what they're supposed to be expressing. Or there was um, an experiment some years ago done by um, a, in a psychology class in somewhere in the US, if I recall correctly. And there was a, a young lady in the class, um, and she wasn't very confident. She was a, um, a bit overweight um, and just didn't feel good about herself. But the, the professor told the fellow students to um, tell her she was beautiful, to tell her, could give her compliments every day. I mean, the, the whole class conspired to do this. And objectively, people weeks later started to say, actually started to see her as beautiful. Yes, that's right. They actually see, and not only that, she started to see herself as beautiful. So we really do create reality, not only for ourselves, but even for other people. So how is it that um, we can create our reality? Yeah, oh, many different ways. It, it's, it, it's our thoughts and our feelings get translated into actions. The things that start on the inside are what get manifested on the outside. Like, for example, the Hopi Indians in, in the southwestern U.S. The elders sit and they dream the world of the grandchildren into existence. And they have no doubt that they do that because their belief is so strong and they're all focused, the energy becomes almost like laser-like and can really affect matter. Thoughts are things. If you want to know the secret behind the secret, that's the secret. Thoughts are things. Thoughts are real in the ether, um, but if you focus on them and keep at them, they become real in the physical world. So, and I want you to think about that. What are you, what are you thinking the, when you walk around as, as you go about your day? Are you saying to yourself, I'm wonderful, I'm fantastic? And I don't mean that from a sense of egotism, but, you know, that you big yourself up. You believe in yourself. You think you are something special and unique because you are. Never forget that. There will never be another one like you, not even your identical twin would be like you. You are unique and special because of that. But if you've been fed 
ma mental malware that I've been talking about for you know from from the time you were a child it's you're too fat you're too slow you're too this you're too that you can't do this you're not able blah 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 now when you're a child you you accept whatever is is fed into you and it becomes your reality and you respond to that reality um, uh, to, to give you an example of how we can internalize things and actually transform ourselves into different beings take the case of people who suffer with uh, by uh, multiple personality disorder or split personalities whatever you'd like to call them I mean it, it, as a result of trauma these different person bits of the personality have split off and taken on a life of their own and to the point where if one the person that say looks like me is one personality if another personality has red hair and green eyes they will actually transform into that other person on the outside so they will have green eyes and different color hair not because they dye it but because they what they see on the inside is so strong that it projects itself outside so that not only do they perceive themselves as being different, we on the outside perceive them as being different, as totally different people, same body, different person. So we really, really, really do create our reality. Um, and it, it just like the woman in the, in the, the Star Trek episode, we can have an, an expansive universe or we can have one that shrinks and collapses in on us. It all depends on perception. It's all about perception, how we process information, take in information, process it, and then what we do with it. Now, if what we do with it happens to be... <laughs> Um, in a way that that is harmful or negative in some way for us that perception projects itself out and people will see that you will see it or may not as the case may be but other people will definitely see it so think about the nature of, of your reality what are you projecting out there who is the person that you're projecting out there. I mean, you know, this can work with all kinds of things, changing it, changing your mind and changing, changing your perspective changes you. Um, I mean, think about it. It's, you, you're trying to lose weight, for example. Staying away from the food or ch chaining the refrigerator shut or smoking thousands of cigarettes to try to, to cut the craving for food is not enough. I mean, you actually have to use your willpower. You have to use this. And if that isn't in the right place, the perception is going to be off. And therefore, what you project and what people see is going to be off. So most, most people aren't, uh, shall we say, inclined to looking at themselves and how they're thinking. And this is where this big um, explosion of, of everything regarding mindfulness has come from because we just most of the time blunder through our lives, blunder through work, blunder through our relationships, and skimming along the surface, flipping through like we're going through our Facebook messages, flip, 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 without taking the time to stop and think be mindful of what you're doing and if your thoughts are what's holding you back if your your reactions to things are what's holding you back if the way you perceive the world is projecting an image that is uh, pushing people away from you rather than drawing them toward you isn't it time to take a closer look in that mirror and see what it is that other people are seeing to to get past the appearances and get to what really is 
I challenge you on that one um, in thinking that, um, oh, I, I can't change. Oh, I can't. Yes, you can. And you know, though the, be the best way to get rid of a, ba one, a bad habit is to develop a new and better one. And anything that you do for 21 days consistently becomes a habit. So that's the secret to, to being able to, to change your thought, is to start policing yourself. Start taking charge of yourself and step back slightly from yourself and look at what you think um, is, the re is the real picture. And you know, we all know that we all perceive things differently. Three people stand on a street corner and they see an accident and they'll all see three totally different things. So, I mean, the nature of reality, everybody has their own version of reality. But sometimes even that reality can get distorted because of um, our thoughts, because of the way we perceive things and react to the, what we perceive. So be mindful. Just don't blunder through a situation or just simply react to a situation, but try to take a few seconds to step back from that situation um, and look at it from a, a hopefully a broader and a, a higher viewpoint rather than one that's all mixed up in the middle of everything and can't quite um, make sense of it all. So those are my thoughts about the nature of reality. You don't have to wait to the 24th century to start changing um, what your universe looks like, you can start doing that right now um, by short-circuiting those, those non-essential and non-productive thoughts that, that travel through our brains, uh, you know, uh, seemingly like, like ghosts that they come and fade in and fade out as and when. When you catch yourself thinking those thoughts, I'm too fat too slow. I can't do this. I don't know. Just in your mind or out loud even, if, it, if you feel like it, talk to the hand. Talk to the hand because the, the brain, the face ain't listening anymore. I find that I occasionally I still have to do that. It's like, you know, when these, these random thoughts that I know that are going to send me into some crazy spiral where I don't want to go and been there, done that, don't want to go there no more. Talk to the hand. I'm not listening anymore. I have moved on from that, from that habit and developed some other habits that are much more beneficial to me. So there it is. Um, I hope you found that of value. And if you did, whether you're listening live or <laughs> you're listening on replay, which is more likely, drop a comment. Drop some thumbs up or love hearts or wows or whatever the case may be and let me know what you think. And if you have any questions or would like to, to further this discussion in some way, contact me, leave a comment or send me a message. Thank you so much for listening and joining with me for a little bit. Have a wonderful week and I'll see you again soon. Take care.